Okay, the theme is finding strategy for ministry. That each ministry should have strategy. And a strategy is different in different times. Now, when I started to be a pastor, one time I heard a teaching about strategy and I said, What strategy can there be? You know, I thought every week I just have a service, I just have Bible study, I just visit the people, and what strategy do, can I have? And uh, later I understand that because the people they are having, they are in different levels. You know, sometimes the church is full of weak people. Sometimes the people have, uh, um, sometimes the congregation have maybe one third stronger Christians. Sometimes the church has half, uh, half of the church members are strong Christians. Then the strategy would be very different. And also, it depends on the spiritual gifts of the people. And if the people have strong spiritual gifts in certain areas, then uh, the ministry can go uh, in a direction that can use their spiritual gifts more. So the, spirit, the strategy of a church will differ with time and with the quality of the people and with the quality of the pastor himself. Okay? First, I want to say all good strategy comes from God. All strategies come from God because God is the most wonderful plan. God is the best plan for every Christian and every church. And His best plan is His strategy. God's plan is the best. If we follow God's plan, then we'll enter the most perfect plan. So I hope that we understand God's plan is the best plan. And when we follow people's way, we you know, people's way are not necessary are not necessary necessarily God's plan. Now, but of course there are Christians who are following God closely. Then their plan would follow closely God's perfect plan. So first God is a wonderful plan. All the days in our life have been written in God's book. And then in that book is all kinds of precious thoughts written in our uh, our book of life. And then also if we enter Okay, and then how can people, how can people enter God's perfect plan? Is uh, we present our bodies a as a living sacrifice, and do not be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of the mind. Then we can start to discern God's perfect plan, and then which is the best strategy. So, the more we follow God, the more the pastor will follow God, and the more the church will follow God the more they will follow God's perfect plan and which is the best for them. Okay, and all strategy comes from God. For God also speaks to us to guide us. John 10, 27. My sheep hears my, hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. So Jesus will guide us. He will speak to us. So we need to spend more time praying and asking for guidance and obey uh, the Bible, which is the Logos. Logos means the Word of God that is already revealed in the Bible. And also from Rhema. This is Greek 4487. If you search online 4487 Greek, then you can find Rhema and find the meaning of it. And uh, this is a, a strong. Uh, concordance and, uh, and dictionary and then so we need to first obey God's word the logos in the Bible and then God's rhema is his conversation with us his guidance with us at different times for instance at a certain time God tell us to uh, train some people to serve God at a certain time God might be telling us to first build up their spiritual strength or maybe God tells us to take them to do evangelism, train them to do evangelism and have evangelism plans. So this is rhema, when to do it. The Logos in the Bible tell us 
you know, always go make disciples of all nations and uh, teach them to obey everything God has taught us. So this is logos. It's always true. But when do we do it? That is rhema, God's guidance. Sometimes God guides us with voice, sometimes with thoughts. <clears throat> and the more we obey God and relax in God, uh, Okay, and then, um, so we, first we find God's, you know, the, the Bible, Logos, the, you know, the Word of God, which is always true. And then Rhema, His Word that is timely, that He speaks to us at a certain time, and so we obey that, and that is His voice and His guidance. And Jesus spent more time with the twelve apostles, uh, this is the first strategy to build up a core group of committed Christians. Spend more time training them and guiding them to serve God. So this is a, an example of Jesus' strategy. The strategy is that he would train, Jesus would train the first, the 12 uh, apostles first. And then this will be the, you know, other than Judas, they will be the, the leaders of the church after that. Uh, when after Jesus was taken to heaven, so that is that was his strategy, and for any church too, that should be our strategy. We should follow the the strategy of Jesus to build up Christians who are committed to God, to build up Christians who will uh, they are trained to love God and serve God and obey God, and also we have trained them in the spiritual gifts that they are strong to follow God. And these are the core members of the church. Whenever we serve, we always look for people who are more, commi more committed, even among the new Christians. Sometimes among a group of new Christians, we might find a few who are more devoted. They really want to learn. They want to love God. They enjoy God. They experience the peace and love of God. And they're very excited and they want to serve God. And there are some people who... Ex who experience uh, the joy and the love of God, they're very excited, but they just keep it to themselves. They don't share with other people. So when Christians enjoy God and love God and obey God and share with other people, these are the special people that we want to put more attention to, that we want to train them more. So this is one good strategy that Jesus has shown us. And then Jesus also emphasized the quality of our spiritual life. Matthew 7, 16 to 17, you will know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. So Jesus said that it's very important, the quality of the tree. The good tree will bear good fruit and a bad tree will bear bad fruit. The good tree are the people who have this simple faith in Jesus. They really appreciate Jesus. They love Jesus. They want to obey Jesus. And they live out the love of Jesus. They have love for people. They have humility in the heart. They want to glorify God. They care about other people. These are the good tree. And the good trees will bear good fruit. And who are the bad trees? The bad trees are people who just look at the problems, they always complain, they always worry, they are unhappy about themselves, they are unhappy about other people, they complain and they don't spend time with God and they just look at the problems and they don't want to spend time studying the Word of God and praying and blessing other people. They just look at the problems. Or even worse, some people, they, you know, they like to sin, they follow sin, and they they are controlled by the sins, and they uh, they uh, they look for money, they look for sex. Now these are the terrible people. They need to repent, because some of these people can lose their salvation. So Jesus pay attention to who are the good fruit and who are the bad, uh, who are the good tree and who are the bad trees. So we want to pay attention to people and discern them. Now this is not judgment. This is discerning. Now, judgment is saying you have no hope. But we always tell them when you repent and obey God, then you have hope. 
all, Jesus always will give you hope. And then we discern people. There are some people who are faithful to God. And then we discern these people and then we put more attention to these people. Now, first, so Jesus pay attention to the quality of our spiritual life. So we to build up our spiritual life is very important strategy. First, ourselves. First, we build up our spiritual life. So we spend time to build up our own spiritual life and the spiritual life of our people. We want to build up everyone's spiritual life. Our strategy depends on how well we can build up the spiritual life of the people and how many people in our congregation are strong spiritually. Strategy is different for each congregation. <clears throat> so the strategy is always build up the spiritual life of ourselves and the people and then train them and then guide them to serve God. But uh, in different stages of the church, we do different things. And the strategy depends on our own spiritual life. Now, if a leader has strong spiritual life, he has built up his spiritual gifts that he is very strong in spiritual life and he has mastered the spiritual gifts that he know how to talk to people, he know how to counsel people, he know how to build up spiritual uh, people's spiritual life, he know how to motivate people with God's love. When he knows how to do all these things by the help of God, then he is a strong leader. And there are leaders who are always burdened with, you know, uh, responsibilities and worry and doubts and, and uh, unhappy feelings. And the leader themselves have problems. So we need to build up our own spiritual life and our maturity in Jesus and our maturity in serving God. We need to build up our spiritual life in all these areas. And then we'll discern the people in the church. So we want to build them up. But when we build up people, they are always good trees. And they are always trees that are not so good. And there are sometimes bad trees. And then we'll discern how many people are good trees, how many people are not good trees. So we'll discern these people. And then we see that, you know, uh, for instance, the church already has a number of strong Christians then it's the time to change a strategy to make use of these stronger Christians, to train them, that, and then it might be necessary to have a different meeting to train them. And in a training, we should pay more attention to the good leaders. And then we'll, you know, we'll give them responsibilities, we guide them to serve, and then after a while we discern who are ready to serve God. So we we'll discern the people what kind of people they are and then we discern how many of these stronger Christians we have in the church and we'll seek God's strategy at that time. Okay, uh, so we need to learn to build up our own spiritual life joyfully and motivated by grace. So this is very important that we are motivated by grace. If people are motivated by the law, then it's always saying, I have to do this, I have to do that, and they are under pressure. We want to serve God with joy and peace and love. We want to serve God all the time with joy and peace. God is so good. I want to follow God. And whenever I follow God, God is very happy with me. And God will bless me. And God will reward me. Then we'll be very happy serving God. So we need to learn to build up our spiritual life in a joyful way and motivated by the grace of God. Now we have talked about that before already. That because God is helping us all the time and God appreciates everything we do for Him. So we have reasons to be joyful. We have reasons to, to uh, relax in God and trust in God. And we should be motivated by the grace of God that instead of by the law, even though we are reminded by the law to obey Him, but the main motivation should be saying, well, God cares about me. God is happy with everything I do for Him. So, so I'm happy to serve Him. This is motivated by grace. And He'll remember everything, everything I do and He will be happy with me. Then we can enjoy our lives and our ministries. And we'll say, wow, I enjoy my Christian life. I enjoy my family life. And I enjoy my ministry. When we know how to help ourselves to enjoy God and be motivated to serve God, uh, then we can help others to enjoy God and be motivated to serve God. So first we can 
enjoy God and we are motivated to serve God and then we can train other people also to enjoy God and to be motivated to serve God that people are not pushed by the law and people enjoy God that you know we for myself every time I pray the joy of the Lord will come to me hallelujah and the joy will come to me and I hope that all of us too will experience this joy uh, or peace when you pray oh thank you Jesus when we relax in God and appreciate God and cry out to God from our heart hallelujah hallelujah <laughs> the more you do that from the heart cry out to God it's like our spirit flying to God to appreciate Him it's like our love will fly to God God I love you I love you I adore you I like you I enjoy you then our love will flow to God. The more our love flows to God, the more we'll have the joy of the Lord. For me, I, when the day when I experienced His joy, I kept praying for a long time. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The more I cry out from my heart, the more I experience His joy. So I hope you all learn to do this. And then you can train other people. I've trained other people to learn to experience this joy also whenever they pray to God. Isaiah 58, 14 Then you shall delight yourself in the Lord and I will cause you to ride on the heights of the earth. So uh, when people delight in the Lord, they're happy with the Lord, they're happy with everything God does. Then God will cause them to go to a high place that their life will go higher and higher. They will become greater Christians. So that is learning to build up our spiritual life and enjoy God, rejoice in the Lord, that when we delight in the Lord, then God is very happy with us and He will refresh us with you know, what we ask for. Then we need to learn to take care of problems in our lives. Then we can help others to take care of their problems of their lives. So we need to mature in every area. If we you know, everyone has sinned. I have sins too, but I will take care of it as soon as possible. Whenever I have any unhappy feelings, whenever I have any, un you know, negative thinking about anyone, immediately I take care of that and I say, I want to bless the person. Instead of thinking negatively about the person, immediately I say, it's okay. I will keep working on it. I will enjoy the Lord. I will bless the person. So I learn to take care of my own problems. Then I learn not to be affected by people. Now, I have other teaching on that, how not to be affected by people. And as I said earlier, I have put my videos online. Uh, you can download for places that you have problem getting online. You can download the videos ahead of time and show them uh, at the same time. And then the people can watch it. And then you, s and, and there's a, you know, a whole folder of many videos uh, that I name it English videos and then you you just search for it and then you'll find it and then you can download it then I I talk about how to take care of sins how to take care of negative feelings how not to be affected by people and many different topics how to how to serve God how to raise up people to serve God so we learn to take care of our problems so when I talk about how to take care of different problems in my life many people say Oh, I never realized that it's not so hard to take care of our sins and take care of our feelings and not to be affected by people and how to have positive feelings all the time, have positive thinking all the time. And I found the secret. And the secret is to say, my life is precious. God loves me very much. And when I obey Him and love Him and, and have positive thinking and positive feelings and take care of my sins God is always very happy and then whenever I sin whenever I don't follow God there is always destructiveness so I realize the importance of loving God and whenever I do for God God is very happy so this motivates me to take care of any of my problems so I have the strongest motivation to not to let anyone affect me I can be talking to someone and a person might be attacking me I'll be talking peacefully with the person I'll be very peaceful because I know it is his problem now if I have anything wrong I'll ask for for forgiveness if not I realize that it is his problem I won't yell at him I would just listen to him I would just respond to him I would just try to uh, uh, let him know what is happening and trying to guide him to change. 
So I learned to take care of different problems and how people affect me. I learned not to be affected by people. Nine, if our ministry is still in an early stage, then our strategy would be about how to build up the members to be stronger in Christ. Now actually, first would be evangelism. How can I go out in the community and bring people into the church? So the first thing. And then after they come to the church, you know, we, you know, we tell people how good God is and then we pray for them. And then some of them experience the peace and the joy of the Lord or healing. And then they will say, God is so wonderful, I want to follow God. And then we take them to church and then we train them to love God. So first, you can use this experience God evangelism. I have that videos also online uh, in YouTube and also in uh, Google Drive. So you can, uh, you know, uh, we find ways to build up people to pray for people to experience God so that they experience the goodness of God and bring them to Jesus. And then we tell them, one day you can also bless other Christians. You can be used by God. You can pray for other people. After you're trained, you can pray for other Christians to help them to love God and obey God. And you'll be used by God and God will bless your whole life. So we'll, the first strategy, when we have a few people, we want to bring more people in the church and we want to build up our members to be stronger in Christ first. At the same time, we train the stronger ones to take care of the other people. So we train the stronger people to take care of the other people, to take care of the weaker ones, so that they will want to, um, you know, they, they see that they can bless other people, they can help other people. So they are more motivated to help other people. And if our ministry is quite developed, then we want to find the spiritual levels and strengths of our congregation. Now, if the church is already growing, then we want to find the spiritual levels and the strength of our congregation. That means some Christians are spiritually still very weak and some are stronger. So we want to find out who are stronger and, and what are their strengths. So some people might be good in music, some people might be good in visitation. So each person might have different gifts. So if our congregation is strong in evangelism or discipleship to to disciple people to help them to grow spiritually in music in care or counseling of people then we want to find plans that can make the best use of the strengths of our members to grow to and to bring growth numerically and spiritually so when we find that okay there are a number of people who are strong in music then we can organize a worship team to lead worship in the church and also do evangelism by using music and if we have a group of people who can visit people then we can bring them to visit people train them and then they can visit the friends and the relatives and the uh, uh, other people in a, a, a living close to them so we we want to train people according to their spiritual gifts this is very important this is very important because God has created each person with uh, certain spiritual gifts. If a person is very strong in evangelism, then use him in evangelism. Instead of putting him in praise and worship, if he's not good in praise and worship, then we are wasting his talents. He might be very strong in evangelism. So we want to use them according to the gifts. And we can train people we can train people, but some people naturally have a stronger motivation to do evangelism. Some people are more talented in music. Some people are more talented in bringing up the spiritual life of people. Some people are more talented in leading meetings. Some people are more talented in organization. So we'll, you know, we'll uh, assign each people, different people, the uh, special position of serving God according to the spiritual gifts. Of course, we can find out more spiritual gifts of each person. Okay, and then if we notice some problems in our congregation that hinder growth, then we need to find strategies to solve the problems. Here are some strategies to handle the problems. So, now, just now I talk about how to do evangelism, the strategy of doing evangelism and raising up the spiritual life of people and then to um, uh, 
to find direction of the church and also to find ministry for people according to the spiritual gifts. So we'll have this strategy to bring church growth. But in the process, we'll find there are people who are problematic. There are some people who come in the church to do to bring destruction. There are some people who you know, follow their lust and they will bring problem in the church. Then when we find this, we need to take care of the problems. Because if the problems are not taken care of, it will ruin the church. It will destroy the church. So analyze the source of the problems and the people involved. So where does this problems come from and who are the people involved? Decide whether we should solve problems ourselves or gather the leaders to solve problems. Now sometimes if it is just one or two persons and it's still in the early stage, we can handle it ourselves. Now when should we involve leaders? We should involve leaders when it involves more people and also when some people are very critical, when some people are criticizing the church. When they're criticizing the church and when we handle it and then they will start to criticize us. So we want the leaders to share the responsibilities with us. Now, if they criticize, criticize us and every leader, that shows that there is something wrong with this person. Unless if there is something wrong with us. If we are following God's way and they keep saying, everyone, you don't understand me, every single person can understand him. Now, if we can understand him, then we should learn to listen and understand him. But if we try our best, the person just want to seek faults, just want to criticize, then the leaders will share the responsibilities together to help this person. And we want to handle this gently, in a gentle way, in a loving way to help these people solve the problems. So uh, whenever the problem is bigger, we should involve the leaders. And also if we involve strong feelings, if some people are very unhappy, we should involve the leader so that, uh, you know, because usually people are not against a whole group of people together. They might be against one person, then we want to involve other people. We don't want to hurt the feelings of the people and we don't want to raise up enemies. So in the process, it's very important. We don't want to hurt people, even if they're wrong. We'll guide them to understand their, their problems. We'll say, what do you think about this that you have done? Do you think it would affect other people? And we ask them, we guide them in a gentle way instead of, instead of yelling at them. Even if they're wrong, we don't have to yell at them. We don't have to hate them. We don't have to uh, make them feel unhappy. Because when we make them feel unhappy, they can become our enemies. We don't have to raise up enemies. It's very important. But some people think as pastors, we have to be very stern and strict. That's not true. That, you know, the Bible talk about that we are good examples to the sheep. That, like Jesus, we want to be humble and meek. Gentle and meek. So, and then if we excommunicate or personal, penalize someone, that means to punish someone, it is best to involve the leaders. Because when it's something heavy, then we need to involve the leader so that people won't say that the pastor is unfair. So this is handling problems. This is important part of a church. If the church has problem, it has to be taken care of before the church can grow. No matter how good the strategies are, still, uh, if there are problems that are not solved, it will destroy uh, It would destroy the, uh, the church. It would destroy the growth. Okay? When a congregation has found a strategy to bring growth, we have to plan everything in detailed ways to maintain that growth and to stop any blockage of the growth. Now, if the church is growing, the church is bringing in more people. And the people are bringing in more people. We have to plan things. For instance, when so many people come to the church, who are to follow up on these people? We need to train people to follow up on the newcomers. We want to train people to greet these people, to write down the information, to visit them. So this is planning. And then when we have 
uh, training we need to have planning also so that we can have uh, a registration of how many people are attending how many people have received the training and what kind of opportunities do we give them to to serve the Lord and what uh, you know how they are doing in serving the Lord so we have to have record and have organization so that people are welcome in the church that we don't leave out people now if some people bring in a lot of people but the pastor don't talk to them that is a waste of the energy it's very important as pastors now for me whenever I see someone brings some new people out I always go up there and and talk with them and welcome them and I will get the information so I can contact them call them up later so I can uh, help them spiritually so this is very important that we plan everything so that we don't lose the growth so that we don't lose people coming to the church of course there will be some who are lost but we'll try our best to keep them some good strategies are prayer meetings that strengthen people that people they come to the prayer it's not just praying praying for many many items now some people pray like this oh first item pray for this building oh pray for the weather pray for money pray for the evangelism you know after we pray for so many things people are tired when we pray we want to first worship that people enjoy the presence of God and enjoy his love thank you Jesus you are loving us you are blessing us you are with us all the time thank you Jesus we can enjoy you thank you so I hope you all learn to enjoy God's love and be strengthened by God's love and then we can pray for one thing for a period of time for instance we can pray for the spiritual strength of everyone here Lord give us love for you give us strong love for you so stay on one idea for a longer time Lord help us to put down our sins so that we love you more you are worthy to be loved we want to love you we want to serve you we want to obey you Lord change our heart that we love you more that we want to serve you more thank you Jesus you're wonderful God you're wonderful God you're wonderful hallelujah so we want to uh, help people to experience the goodness of God and experience change of life in this uh, prayer in the prayer meeting that people are strengthened and then we pray for each items you spend some time we just don't just read out the item but we actually ask God to work in this area uh, uh, and then everyone wholeheartedly support that for instance we want to pray for this community that more people will come to know Jesus Lord help us to have the love for them it's very important to pray for our motivation to care for the things that we pray for also when we pray for evangelism we want everyone to have the zeal to pray for to to pray for the people and to reach out to them with evangelism Lord give us the love for these people we want to care about these people we want to bring them to Jesus we want to lead them to grow in Jesus we want to bring them to heaven Lord Jesus help us to be good examples to them that we have love for each other that they can see Jesus love in our life thank you thank you thank you we want to pray for for the transformation of this congregation for this uh, uh, community so in the prayer meeting that people are strengthened that they will say Lord yes 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 we want to love the people around us we want to change them we want to care about them so the people are transformed in the process of the prayer meeting and then and help people to experience the Holy Spirit so uh, the pastors and the leaders when after the train can lay hand on the people to experience the Holy Spirit so they experience the Holy Spirit and give them motivation and give them joy and peace and healing and uh, that will give them strength to grow so the work of the Holy Spirit is very important in changing the spiritual life of people and caring for the members so so uh, these are good strategies that we learn that we organize ways that we can care for each person that we have people to follow up on them and we train people everyone will follow up on someone to care for other people and discipleship that will train leaders to disciple others to train them up in spiritual life and respond to their needs respond to the problems to help them overcome the problems so that they will grow spiritually 
and also uh, cell groups this is good strategy that there will be cell group leaders who will lead a group first they need to be trained that they lead a cell group uh, meeting every week and they will discuss the uh, the sermon of the pastor of that week and apply it to the lives of the people and care about the, each of the cell group members and pray for them and follow up on them and and visit them and and have good relationship with them cell group is very important to have good relationship with every group, cell group members to keep them being stable coming to the cell group and coming to the church so cell groups are utilizing more people in the church to follow up on people and meetings to motivate and revive people so we need to have revival meetings that people are motivated that the, the life is changed that the pe people learn to love God more and they experience the love of God that they love God more and they are zealous to to reach out uh, to the world to bring people to Jesus and reach out to to go out to do evangelism and training programs train people how to pray for people how to do evangelism how to uh, raise up people's spiritual life how to disciple people how to lead worship how to care for people how to resolve problems how to take care of problems in life so we need to have training programs so my teaching material can be used for training and then leading people to serve God so we guide them we train them and then we guide them together we lead them together to serve God together and we follow up on them how they're doing and help them to do better and meetings for people to share what they have done for God so there can be meetings that people will share what they've done for God how they do evangelism how their life is changed how they rejoice in the Lord so they share about good things God has done in their lives and then people will be motivated to follow God more and applauding members who love and serve God so when there are members who love God and serve God and bring people to church or strengthen other Christians we want to uh, uh, applaud this person we want to say thanks to this person people and we want to uh, encourage others to learn from these people and then but we, w we don't want you know envy and jealousy we want people to say I want to learn from that person instead of comparing with that person so these are some good strategies okay so uh, so this is what we have talked about today and uh, now these two teachings actually in a way is related and linked I'm going to summarize it I'm going to summarize both teachings the first teaching is how to serve God joyfully and fruitfully and not to carry burdens and the second is how to find a strategy of God that um, so first we you know we have a good relationship with God that we uh, we enjoy God all the time and we know that God is responsible for the result we just our responsibility are just to trust in God and have a close relationship with God and serve God and bless people and help people and lead the church these are our responsibilities and God is responsible for growth of course we we are responsible but the the burden is on Jesus Jesus will bring in people and we ourselves would do our best to bring people and keep the people but it's Jesus who changed the spiritual life so we don't carry the burden and then we are strengthened by God all the time we enjoy God all the time when we have the strength from the Lord and then we will want to bless people and then we talk about also uh, certain ways that, some teachings that are very helpful in building up people and some ways to how to build up the church and then uh, the strategy about a strategy is for each church there is a different strategy a different stage when a church is still young the strategy would be to do evangelism uh, and then also to uh, strengthen the members there so that they will start to be leaders to build up the church and uh, to respond to the needs of the people so that in the early stage and then when the church grows more we want to evaluate the church how strong is the church now sometimes the church might have many people but most of the people are not strong then we need to ask ourselves why the church is not strong 
uh, did we do did we miss anything did we train them to love God did they enjoy God you know it's very important that people enjoy God to have strength when people always think of prayer and me and reading the Bible it's, it's responsibilities always think they always think oh, I have to do this I have to do that I have to pray I have to read the Bible I have to do evangelism then it become heavy on them but if they say when I pray to God God is very happy when I obey God, God is very happy. When I serve God, God is very happy. And God will help me in all these things. Then they will enjoy serving God. So we want to train people to enjoy serving God. And they are strengthened. And we want to find out the reason why some people are not changed. What, what stops them from growing? When we know the problem, then we find strategies to fix the problem. So that involves strategy to fix problems and also strategy how to raise up people to serve God more efficiently how to use the people to guide them to direct them to serve God more efficiently so that needs strategy and then when a church has grown become stronger then we want to organize the people to, for a stronger growth sometimes the church might have a extension somewhere have a second church at some homes first maybe have Bible study in some church in, in some home and have prayer meeting in a home at the same time we teach the people to be faithful to the church because sometimes when people have home prayer meeting and 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 Bible study they will split up split up uh, from the church uh, that is not a good thing uh, that would cause the church to split up now if it split up to another church and form another church is not necessarily wrong but if they do it out of selfish reason they just want to build a ministry and take people from the church then it's not a good motivation but if the church blesses blesses them that we together want to build up uh, branches extensions of the church in different parts of the of the city or different parts of the country then it's a good thing so we can do that. We can do that by, by uh, uh, training people to build up a new church, how to build up, how to have um, good worship, how to, have, how to train people, how to uh, um, bring in more people, uh, do more evangelism, and organize the church. So all of this, all of this can, you know, takes planning. So we want to plan how to help the church grow. At the same time, we want to have qualities in the church that people are attracted to the church. They're attracted by the care of the people, the care of the pastor, the direction of the church, the power of the Holy Spirit, uh, the, uh, the strategy of training people, letting everyone serve God, and appreciating everyone. This will attract people to stay in the church. That people have a sense of belonging. They know that the church belongs to them, and they are appreciate it for everything they do for God and for the church then people will be attracted to stay in the church so we want to to uh, build that up and then we don't want to be selfish and say I just want people to stay in this church sometimes uh, you know when we are too possessive and then people would would dislike that and then people would break away from the church intentionally so we want to you know we want to have an open mind we accept people if they are blessed by church if they want to start a new church they have to talk with the pastors and the church and then we'll first with the pastor and then the pastor will lead the discussion with the church how to help whether we want to bless this person to start a new church and then how to help this person to build a church that way then it's it uh, it's promoting growth uh, of the church so all this needs strategy because without strategy people just go in different directions they don't have a goal when we have a goal we want to have evangelism now we want to have growth now we want to build up more people now we want to have bible school students we want to train people now we want to do different things for god now then our lives will go higher and higher when we have a clear direction so we need to find a clear direction from God what does God want us to do now what is the best strategy for us now so I pray that you know you would understand these messages and apply it and if you have questions you can send to me now in a leaders group and I'll respond to you and we'll pray 
that we we'll all find strategy to strengthen our spiritual life and strengthen other people's spiritual life and strengthen the church okay we'll pray now dear Lord Jesus thank you Lord Jesus Jesus we thank you because you love us so much you care about us and you have the best strategy you have the best plan your plan is the best strategy Lord help us to appreciate your strategy that will follow the logos the Word of God and follow the rhema your voice to guide us we want to follow your guidance how to help the church to grow how to love you how to obey you how to use our spiritual life Lord Jesus please help us please help us please give us strength use us and guide us to serve God with joy and peace with freedom without burden and and also at the same time with much fruit that we want to love you and enjoy you and and have more love for people and we're filled with joy and peace and love and then we'll be more fruitful Lord Jesus we help we thank you we thank you because you are the most wonderful Lord and most wonderful leader the most wonderful master you will guide us you will have a wonderful plan for our lives Lord help us to help the church to grow that we have direction clear direction how to grow the church how to guide the church to grow how to raise up people to serve God that we have stronger people in the church Lord Jesus we need you we thank you we appreciate you you are a wonderful God you are, you are a loving God you are a kind God you are a powerful God Lord help us to find your strategy and know that our whole life needs strategy we need strategy in our family to build up relationship with our wife how to build up the relationship with our wife according to our condition if the con if the relationship is not so good how can we fix the problem and gradually build up the marriage how to build up the relationship with the children if the relationship is already good how can we make it better and how can we train our children to love God more so in family life we need strategy in our uh, ministry we need strategy in our work in our workplace we need strategy our whole life needs strategy Lord help us to find your direction for our whole life what is your direction for us that we want to seek God and then when we hear from God when we hear from God God's strategy our spirit will agree with that and say that is a good strategy Lord help us and be with us thank you Lord Jesus hallelujah thank you Jesus thank you Jesus hallelujah in Jesus name we pray amen so God bless you all God be with you all so please uh, let me know how uh, can you hear me clearly and uh, and then if you have any questions please send to me okay God bless you and God be with you hallelujah praise the Lord and so I hope that you will stay being joyful and serve God with power and joy and freedom and no burdens and with strategy okay God bless you bye bye mm -hmm.